Okay. All right. The gazebo is one that I bought down at York a few years ago. I brought it home and I, I made some of the flowers and the vines and things growing on it. And when I got it done, I thought, well, that would be a perfect place to put a park bench with a young couple sitting in there. And I went down to English's and I grabbed a, the first bag that I found that had a, a guy and a girl in a seated position and I saw he had his arm around her and I thought well that's perfect so I brought it home and of course it's in like a little clear plastic bag and I handed it to my wife and said look these are going in the gazebo and she looked at it and she said you can't put that on the train layout and I said why not and she said well look where he has his hand and if you look very closely there you'll see he has his right hand right up under her shirt so I either point that out or not, depending on the age of the people that are visiting. At the Palace Theater, the movie that's playing is Peter Pan. And my wife and I, uh, the story of Peter Pan has kind of been our little theme since we got together. Um, we really enjoy the line in there about when Peter takes Wendy and the boys to Neverland, the directions to Neverland are second star to the right and straight on till morning. And we've repeated that theme a lot. We have a moon and two stars on our wedding rings and uh, several different places on the layout where you can find the, the same thing. But that's, that's why Peter Pan is always playing at the theater. Okay, we've got this uh, red Pennsylvania, I, I should say burgundy, uh, Pennsylvania Williams train master in the camera. This makes an interesting loop. It's basically got a reverse loop on one end uh, where it's parked here and a reverse loop on the other end of the layout. And it makes a rather complex uh, uphill and downhill circuit. And Rob just started it up. I'm going to let him take it away with the uh, narration. The train leaves the reversing loop, it starts to climb, and now it's on the second level of the layout, and it's still climbing up to the third level, and now it starts back down as it goes by the carnival, back to the second level, and over into town, and over there is a second reversing loop. If you watch the train, it'll turn around and it'll go back through the switch right there. And now it starts back the direction that it came, but going the, going the opposite direction. So now it's climbing up again. Up to the third level. Finally gets back down here to where it started. So it's actually made half of its complete route. It came back to where we started, but it was going the opposite direction. Now as it goes up and around for the second time, it's going actually the opposite way on a, on a different track than it was the first time. I guess it is the same track. comes back into town, you'll see it goes around town the opposite direction that it did the first time. and it'll be back here to where it originally started. Right there. Wow. 
Okay, we're going to trace these F3s around. This is a different train running on the same mountain. Uh, you want to say a few words about that? If you look right now, it's actually passing over top of itself as it comes around the, as it goes up the mountain. And it loops around and goes into town. This is a uh, completely separate track from the Williams train that we were watching a little bit ago. This isn't nearly as complicated a loop. This is just a, it's kind of a winding circle. What brand of train is that? That's a Lionel F3 from the 1970s. You say not as complicated. It's enough to confuse the cameraman here trying to keep it in the camera, I can assure you. Uh, can you start up the train master and leave this one running and we'll get both of them running on the mountain? Sometimes the trains are running parallel to each other, and sometimes they're, they're meeting each other. So it, it makes it more interesting because you're approaching things from different angles. Now you were saying something a minute ago when I didn't have the camera turned on about you didn't like just plain old flat loops. You tried to make it a little bit more interesting. Well, I think any time you have a train going around in a circle or an oval, uh, you quickly become bored with it. And to get rid of that boredom, you have to train two different things. It can be something just as simple as going into a tunnel and out the other side, where it disappears from view for a little bit. But I also like to connect the trains operate so that they come toward you, so they go away from you, and where you, I like to try to keep people guessing as to which tunnel is it going to come out of. You know, they see it go in somewhere, and then they wonder and hopefully are surprised at where it comes out. Okay, well, you've, you've certainly succeeded in getting the uh, cameraman here <laughs> guessing. I have no idea where I want to go with the camera the next, with the next shot, so that's why this is a little bit uh, uncoordinated appearing. Several main areas on the layout. One of them is right here. This is supposed to represent the Millville Carnival. And uh, my wife agreed with me for a while, and then after I started adding more and more things, she decided it was starting to look more like Knoebels Grove than, than Millville. But uh, anyway, that's the Millville Carnival. And then. And as you can see, it's getting dark over the over the town, and you have to use your imagination a little bit and pretend that it's pitch black in here. And you'll see that the only light is the spotlight that's on the American flag. You have that in your yeah, I'm zooming in. Shot. 